นิวยอร์ปาราปาราราราราเนิวยอร์ก We are going back to New York I have literally never been on a British Airways flight before no, in my entire life Oh that's cute look at that Mamma Mia and Mamma Mia too Here we go again Aaron and I are playing a heated game of Monopoly We've just landed in I was going to say Manhattan but it's not Someone just walked into me Welcome to Manhattan It's Schmackeries Everything tastes better when it's musical theatre themed. The blisteringly bright LED screen of Monty Python's Spamalot. We have Spamalot socks with the cows. We will have been awake for 24 consecutive hours. Our first show, which is Harmony, is in 20 minutes. Aaron is the seventh member of the Comedian Harmonists. I like the cup. The cocktails didn't like set my world aflame. Check out Girls Bobby Race. We're going to a show now. This is our view of the stage. Leg room in here. Far better than any other I have experienced on Broadway. <laughs> we are now going to the Glasshouse Tavern to finish the day. Oh my god, hey! It is a new day here in New York City. Are we still in New York City? We're still in New York City, we're just in Brooklyn. Yeah. Yes, we're just not in Manhattan. I understand geography. Oh my god, hey, Ashley! <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's here, we're about to go and have a, a Brooklyn lunch. You are! We are here. Here we are! Recently closed at the shed. I'm wearing Harmony merch that you can see twice. Aaron's wearing Harmony merch. Yeah, you can tell we liked it because we got merch. But I also think I'm dressed like background vocalist from Pitch Perfect in a group that's called Harmony with <coughs> mer flares and this like layering situation. Yeah, I feel like you're about to go to like, like Broadway and Bryant Park or like West End Live to perform. I see you that. The way the show like I'm doing like the one of the cast of Harmony repping yeah. it. I see that. I see that for me. You look like. Do, do people know that one picture of Dwayne the Rock Johnson with the turtleneck and the the chain? Because that's like that's what I'm getting from this. We're gonna go have some lunch now. We're gonna take you with us to go and have a Brooklyn lunch before we ovs head to Broadway this evening to go see another show. Oh my god! Hey, we had lunch. It was a lot of lunch. We had pizza. There's Aaron. Hi. Here's Ergie. Oh, we had Detroit-style pizza from Emmy Squared, which we've had every time we come to New York, but normally from the one in Manhattan, which is under the Civilian Hotel, where we stayed on our first trip. And today we went to the one in Park Slope in Brooklyn, which was lovely. And the Zia fries to share, always. They are so, so good. Mwah. Delicious. We should probably head into Manhattan soonish but i have an ogie with me boosh, boosh, boosh. he's camera shy right now say hello to the say hello to the tiny people at my camera uh -huh. it's ogie. ogie look what's over there look, 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 look. <laughs> we have made it back to Manhattan, back to Times Square. I want to, I'm going to show you something because the Nederlander theatre is being weird. So over there is the Nederlander, but you can see the, the, the signs there. It's calling itself the show card. We think something must be filming and like for the purposes. Oh, now it's a hotel. Has that always been there? Have I never noticed that? It super looks like it's the theatre name. That's oh, strange. In any case, movie? no longer shocked at the... Movie? Obviously not. No longer shocked at the Nederlander. It is now the Who's Tommy. And we're not going to cross this road yet because traffic's still happening. Now we're going to cross the road. I don't think we've really done Times Square in the daylight yet because we keep working in the daytime and then just coming in of the evening or being in matinees yeah. I guess this evening we're going to see another play we're going to see Appropriate starring Sarah Paulson uh, at the Helen Hayes Theatre oh that's bright 
Um, and it's another long play. Like, last night's was long, but it felt fast. And it had two 10 minute intermissions, which I appreciated. Aaron is on a mission. We are not in a rush. Um, and tonight's it just has one intermission. Apparently, the second act is an hour 45 by itself. Like, a single act being one hour 45 is madness. That's madness to me. Look at 42nd Street all lit up. Looking vibrant and colorful. All going on here. Here is the marquee for Doubt at the now renamed Todd Hames Theatre, which is good because the American Airlines sign was constantly missing letters. But the glow from this nice orange hue there it's going to make all your selfies outside this theater look like it's golden hour on Instagram, so there's that. Example, this is me outside down with a healthy glow. We are walking up 8th? Yeah. 8th. Um, turns out, so the show card thing was just a hotel, but what has been filming in Hell's Kitchen today, Aaron James? It's been Daredevil, born again. Daredevil? Daredevil has been filming. Yeah. So, I mean, eyes peeled. I don't we know were, if they're... If we were in the hotel when we stayed here before, we, were, we could have seen it because we'd have been roaming about. But I think they were filming Daredevil. <laughs> that, well, no, they were filming something then. I can't remember. So we are once again walking past Moulin Rouge. But we are not here for truth, beauty, freedom, or I was about to say tooth. <laughs> Listen, my brain is tired. Um, yeah, we are here because schmackeries. Yeah. Basically, because we had, we had a large late lunch. And so the New York way of doing this, I don't know if this is actually a thing or if this is just us, <coughs> um, is because people still go out like after shows and eat after shows, yeah. which is like a mad alien concept to British people because everything shuts after shows. Yeah, you can't eat after a show unless it's like station food. Yeah, but here you can still like get cheesecake at midnight from Junior's. Uh, so we had a large late lunch, and so we're like, let's have a dessert before the show, see the show, and then pick up something afterwards, and then take it back to Ashley's. And we might be seeing early theater in the morning, so early night, not cocktails into the midnight hours for once, which is welcome because we are sleepy. Honestly, like I wasn't that bad. And then we ate the food and that's, that's done me in. But we are going to go get schmackeries. I would like an ice cream cookie sandwich. I don't know about you. Mm, I think I'm just gonna get a cookie. Just a regular, regular old cookie. So there are lots of show themed ones currently. We've got Newsies, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, Moulin Rouge, Six, Wicked, and Kimberly Akimbo cookies. So many show themed snacks here at Schmackeries. Again, not sponsored, simply devoted. Okay. I got another Kimberly Akimbo cookie because it was so good. And I actually, I don't think I'm hungry enough to have an ice cream sandwich, but at some point before we leave, Aaron. Hello. Mr. Aaron James. Got a root beer. I like root beer, but it's a really like, some people like it, some people hate it. Does it taste like beer? No. It's, a, it's very sweet. Oh. It's just got a very different type of taste. I'm gonna try it for the first time But it's an American drink. Okay, well I'm here to immerse myself in the local culture. I'm gonna pour some local culture down my throat right now. Oh, it's a bit medicinal. That's, that's what I was gonna explain. But I don't hate it. It's a bit like violet -y. It's nice. Mm. Yeah. I can give it back to you though. It's not that. <laughs> the cookie is still going to be more exciting. This is the. Was it called the Great Adventure? Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with this cookie. Kimberly Akimbo no, cookie. Sprinkles it everywhere. Sprinkles everywhere. That's a gift for the pigeons for later. Can pigeons have sprinkles? No. They'll find out the hard way. That's my bad. But. Mm. Mm. So good. So good. So good. Back past Moulin Rouge at the Al Hirschfeld Theatre. Kind of from from the like limited experience, just walking around and going to shows. The only place on Broadway where the queue to enter the building begins more than an hour before curtain, and certainly a long time before they actually open the doors to let people in. But consistently, they are queuing up for Moulin Rouge. I mean, that's an eager audience. 
or, or someone's miscommunicating something about the arrival time. I don't know, but I'm, I'm intrigued about what's happening there. Also, while we've been discussing filming things on Broadway, we've just passed uh, the Jacobs, where the Outsiders will be opening in March, um, but across the street, outside the music box, those big vans are there because they've just filmed Pearly Victorious for PBS, I think. I, I think for PBS, for something. They've filmed it for posterity in any case. And behind us is The Notebook. I think that just looks like light to you at this point. You're gonna have to trust me. And now, Kimberly Akimbo. Kimberly Akimbo at the booth. And on the other side, Steam. Time to kill before seeing a serious, thought-provoking Broadway play equals going to the Disney store. Because absolutely, why not? Look, there's these cute lanterns up above my head. And at last I see the light. Back into Times Square, just passing the Chicago flyering team behind us. A few shows do this, but Chicago always has a pretty strong Times Square presence of people handing out flyers, advertising um, for the show. I kind of wish more shows did that. I don't think, I mean, it's not a specially glamorous job to have, but if nothing else, I'm curious about the themed outfitting that they would wear, because the Chicago ones get these cute little hats and like red tights and cute little boots. It's like, if Shucked had flyers and Manhattan. If Shucked had flyers, and maybe they did, were they dressed like corn? This is the question. So as we're approaching the theatre here um, uh, across the street, just noticing the new light bulbs up at the Schubert. Does it mean are there too many letters for the amount of frame they have here? Hell's Kitchen looks like it's spilling out over the side. I mean, some like it hot was probably the same. I don't know. Just looks like there's too many letters. But I do love these. What were you just saying, Aaron, about delay bulbs? Oh, like it's interesting they've gone back to all the same colour again because with some like it hot, they went through red with a hot. They could have done the same here with hell. I wonder if that does imply a sort of a satanic element to the show which I don't think I think it's really just strictly a geographical Hell's yeah. Kitchen context I don't think it's yeah it is because Hell's yeah. Kitchen remember where dreams begin. I think it's minimally biblical yes well it's been a long day and it's time for us to hit the hay the Helen Hayes get it get it we're going to the Helen Hayes theatre now to go and see appropriate and we're taking you with us so this is the Helen Hayes Theatre here with its lovely orange awning, uh, currently operated by Second Stage Theatre Company. And there's a poster there for Appropriate, starring Sarah Paulson, who you may recognise from the televisions, from the American Horror Stories and the American Crime Stories and such. That's the rest of the cast. And there you go. Second Stage on Broadway. We're going to go inside and go and see a play. OK, we are seated inside the Helen Hayes. We have our playbills. Aaron's taking the playbill photo. Um, having spoken about how great and spacious the seats were at the Freedman last night, you can tell the difference because these ones are cosy. They are cosy. But hopefully the play is gripping, captivating and transporting. I need to take my hat off because that's very rude. Even though I have all manner of hat hair going on now. And let me turn you around and show you some of this auditorium because it's interesting. So this is the auditorium and you notice the blue and the sort of uh, brown, orangey brown colours of the seats. That is the set there. We can see sort of like household things at the front, uh, but what's written there is the dictionary definition of the word appropriate, which of course is the title of the play. And you can see the usual things up here, chandeliers, lighting fixtures, you can see the mezzanine level. Um, and sort of from a distance, that just looks like a pattern on the walls. But because we're sat right up against the left-hand wall, we can see over here, it's pointillism. That pattern is created by a bunch of little dots that when seen from a distance, just look like a larger picture. 
but pointillism. Isn't that cute? Something very modern about that, but creating a very classic aesthetic, which I enjoy a lot. Oh my god, hey. Uh, Ash is here. Kate is here. Hello. Aaron's here. We're going on an expedition to go and see 9am theatre in Brooklyn. Yay! Which I, didn't, which I did not mean to say with such disdain. It's actually very cutting edge and very exciting. But New York is literally the city that never sleeps and neither do we when we are here. It's also the city that wakes up the next morning and says, why did I do that? So, tired. It's um, worth it though, the show is so good. Heard great things. Um, so, heading over to a show called Terse in a place called a church, wearing three different kinds of merch. Um, that rhymed accidentally. And currently it's sold out, so we'll see if we can actually get tickets. If not, we're going to walk around and go get coffee and enjoy Brooklyn vibes. But currently, on, on these streets, hoping for returns and or rush and or I, I guess church standing room <laughs> church standing room it's know. only an hour so like it's only an hour yeah it's fine this is Park Slope's 5th Avenue it's fancy it's nice and it's quieter than Midtown Manhattan and we appreciate that Although Midtown Manhattan, probably still also fairly quiet pre 9am <laughs> because this is not a natural time for New Yorkers to be alive. So this is the venue. In fact, we have just seen the show, but this is the Irondale. It's a big old church. Look at that. So funny story, nearly did not make it into that show because they technically, ha I think they had like one seat left, otherwise very well sold, um, but we hopped on the wait list and then they had enough no shows by curtain that they could let us in and sell us some tickets, but moral of the story, persevere and um, just go and approach the box office with gratitude and patience and then go see a show in a church in Brooklyn because it was really good my gosh I'm gonna I'm going to try and get some adjective responses from the group hold on can I vox pop you all about terse does anyone have like a one adjective response to the piece of theater we just enjoyed together spiritual spiritual it, you know it was spiritual it was sacred and spiritual without like the structure of organized religion but like harmonic. the vibes harmonic Ooh, yes Lebowski thoughts the pressure it was, <laughs> it was just I you, it's like cliche but unique like it's such a unique theatrical yes experience yes so different from anything else you've ever seen before that it yes. like challenges your notions of what live theater can be amazing that was that was a very articulate one word response that was great <laughs> we're now um, heading to a brunch location somewhere in brooklyn i don't think we know where we're going we're following ashley and ashley this is like being in the first act of here we are honestly but also trying to like have impromptu brunch on a saturday morning in brooklyn I feel like that could be very popular and busy for a group of six. We're passing the Barclays Center, if that means it's an arena. anything to anyone. No, Ashley told me what it was earlier. Oh God, we're crossing the street. We're crossing the street. And then just like that, after a lovely brunch at a place called Miriam in Brooklyn, uh, overlay footage of me eating a croque madame with scrambled eggs and uh, Kate's challah French toast, we're now in Midtown Manhattan, further up than we've been so far on this trip. We are up uh, just on 53rd Street and Broadway at the moment, which I'm reading from a street sign, but we are outside the Broadway Theatre, not where we're going today, but because they have a digital marquee they've already got it up for The Great Gatsby which we saw on our last trip we headed over to Paper Mill Playhouse in New Jersey to see the first preview of its regional premiere and now it's coming to Broadway that's how fast the night changes here in New York and then slightly further up you would be forgiven for thinking that this was a Broadway theatre. I like to call this the Colbert Theatre. In fact, it is where the Stephen Colbert show, uh, the late show with Stephen Colbert, I should say, 
Is it the Ed Sullivan Theatre? Oh yeah, it says it on the front. It's the Ed Sullivan Theatre. Is that where they used to film the Ed Sullivan Show? That would that would stand to reason. I still prefer the Colbert. In fact, we are going to two new theatres neither of us have ever been to before today. Where are we going first, Aaron? Studio 54. Studio 54, which is on... 54th. It's on 54th Street, helpfully. More Broadway theatres should have a street name in their title because it helps us remember. And we are seeing Days of Wine and Roses. In fact, we're at the back of the theatre right now and there is a big old poster. I don't know if you can quite discern that. Kelly O'Hara and Brian Darcy James. And there's a Club Coming sign. There is. I was going to show them that when we got to it. Oh, is it there? Yeah, it is there. Oh, that. we should try and cross this street because then we can actually show all of these things. As you can tell, I'm an expert videographer. How's this? Is this good? Here we go. So you can see Days of Wine and Roses up there. And then it's not lit up, but that sign is for Club Coming, which is now an actual club um, downtown, but it was basically started out of, it says original home of Club Coming because it started out of his dressing room while he was doing the return engagement of Cabaret. Not the first time he did it on Broadway, but when it came back the second time in the 2010s with Emma Stone, Sienna Miller and that lot. We're very early for our matinee, um, not early enough to like go and do a whole other activity, um, but it's like quarter past two and this is a 3pm Saturday matinee, largely because it's a one act show. So it'll still be over by like 4.30. But we're exploring with the time that we have and we've come down to the August Wilson Theatre, which is being turned into the Kit Kat Club. It will still keep the name August Wilson Theatre for reasons I'll explain in a moment, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. And here it is, this is the August Wilson Theatre where we saw Funny Girl now being turned into the Kit Kat Club. And it's going to say Kit Kat Club on, um, but they're still keeping the name August Wilson Theatre. I think because the Playhouse Theatre in London was turned into just the Kit Kat Club at the Playhouse. This is an actual name of an actual person, so removing it feels a little more egregious. And also, like you, want, you don't want tourists to get confused about the whereabouts if they're like searching up the Kit Kat Club and it's not finding it on a map or any of the above. Midtown Manhattan's hard to navigate at the best of times for international tourists, so you know, that helps. But it's an interesting style. This theatre has a very particular sort of a Mediterranean aesthetic on the front with the little Juliet balconies and the columns over there and this whole colour. That's the same vibe inside. It always reminds us of the um, Savoy theatre with the walls, with the fruit, but it's not the one I would have chosen for the Kit Kat Club aesthetically, but there are many more factors that went into choosing where they were going to transfer this award-winning production of Cabaret. So we've come <laughs> over to the Gershwin to look at Wicked merch through the window, because uh, they have bucket hats now and I want one, um, but also we've just noticed like Okay, last time we were here, because I'm about to say something that sounds wrong. I was going to say this is the first time we've been here that there's been a show in the Circle in the Square. Not true, because Melissa Etheridge's show was here last time we were here. But that was like a special limited engagement. This is like a show show. It's still limited, but like an enemy of the people. But it makes me laugh how, I don't know if you're seeing these font sizes. There's a tiny little Anne over there. You can see it with this. So it's like an enemy of the people. <laughs> <laughs> ah, very silly of me. Um, they'll have more posterage over here. This is featuring Jeremy Strong from television's Succession. And more people I don't know. Michael Imperioli. I don't know who that is. There you go. An Enemy of the People. A play which is also happening in London soon with Matt Smith. So, like, interesting to have different productions on either side of the Atlantic. And that's Aaron James, a friend of the people, I guess. I don't know. Hi. Got some reflective ceiling going on here. Woo woo. Hello. I hope that worked. Um, it's coming up to half past two. So this is our half hour call for our 3 p.m. matinee of Days of Wine and Roses. So we're heading back to Studio 54, which is so named because that was Studio 54, by the way. It is now a theatre, but it used to be... Um, world famous nightclub. World famous nightclub, yeah. Um, 
and I have just come up with a stupid nickname for it that I would like to make stick because it's next to iconic beloved cabaret space 54 below yeah and so the theatre should be called 54 above okay, I feel like that would be like if they put a room above the theatre Oh, so like, okay, so Studio 54 is like 54 at ground level. Where are you going? I'm just going to go down enough. I'm gonna, I mean, it's closer to 8th and 7th. I think I've finally it's reached... Middle, I think. It's not, it's like on this end. I will keep this camera rolling to prove my point. I'm a petty, petty man when it comes to geography. Even though you're not very good with a map. I can, no, okay. Street geography, I can do. And I was just about to say, I think I've reached the point of our trip now where I've now got my brain around Midtown Manhattan. Geography in a broader sense, like where is Tunisia? I don't know. I do not know that. I just... North Africa. I could not... Is it? Yeah. Even as I said that, I thought it was in Europe. No, North Africa. I literally don't know. I, like I said, I am not what? Mickey J places. We're gonna go up to 54th Street, Studio 54, to go see Days of Wine and Roses. I'll see you there! And then here it is, light bulbs are flickering, steam are billowing. This is very New York, very Broadway marquee. This is Studio 54, I literally nearly just called it 54 Below again. Kelly O'Hara and Brian Darcy James starring in the new musical Days of Wine and Roses with the Roundabout Theatre Company at Studio 54. We're going to go inside and I'm very excited to go see a brand new theatre. Yeah. So once you get inside and through security there's this lovely entranceway with these chandeliers and these mirrors and these gorgeous ceilings and like is this is this parquet floor? Is this a simple tile? I don't know what to call it but a very glamorous entrance to Studio 54. We've got a list of some of the Tony Award winning shows from uh, Roundabout Theatre Company. Not all from this theatre specifically, interestingly enough. I only know that because Anything Goes definitely was not here. Neither was Cabaret in 98. Um, but there is an actual Tony Award down here. An American Theatre Wing Tony Award. I don't know what this one was for. They don't, they don't tell you nearby, but it's a real Tony. It spins and everything. And then beyond um, that entranceway, we have the merch kiosk. The merch supplied by Creative Goods. You can see a pin badge and a magnet just here. Uh, there's a baseball cap up there for $30. There's t-shirts. And there is, over the other side, a tote bag. Uh, it's not the world's most exciting design, um, but haven't seen the show yet, so that may make more sense. And then we have the company board here. It is not just a two-hander. The marketing may confuse people, but there are more than two people in this cast, even though the show itself is only seamless pan, one hour and 45 minutes without an intermission. So I'm just by the bar, which is at the back of the orchestra section, and you can see the featured cocktails here. If I'm not mistaken, I think these are themed to the venue rather than the show, um, because it's Studio 54, so they're like, disco-y theme, like the Disco Diva, the Mirror Ball, the Velvet Rope, Dancing Till Sunrise, that's all giving me Studio 54 and not Days of Wine and Roses. But again, without having seen the show, I have heard that it's about alcoholism, so theming cocktails to that may be tricky. I will confirm all of this for you later on, but I suspect that may have something to do with it. I will also say, not just drinks, this is one of the venues served by Sweet Hospitality Group, and I had one of their brookies at the Broadway Flea Market back in October, and my life was entirely changed. So can recommend. I'm not going to have one this afternoon because I had leftover cheesecake after brunch and I am very full, but can recommend. So I'm in my seat. I'm in D118, I think. I, ca I can't see it now. Um, but there's this on the end here that says, in honour of Alan Cumming, who we were just discussing, whose show in London we saw recently. So that's quite special. And also, if you're going to sit for an orchestra here, you'll notice rows one, two, three, four. Row D, there's a lip. So I'm distinctly higher in my view. Um, I get a little bit of a rake because of that. I get a little bit of an incline. So I would opt for row D over ABC unless you desperately want to be right at the front, which obviously, of course, uh, there also won't be heads in your way because you'll be at the front. This is uh, the stage set up here. It's not really telling us much. Uh, it's very New York-y, 
I guess we will find out more shortly in Days of Wine and Roses. Let me show you my playbill. There it is. Brian and Kelly. I am very ready for this. Of days of wine and roses. As the steam continues to billow behind. Is that such just all day? Relentless. Where's it all coming from? What's all this steam about New York? I just. Is it? It's a lot of steam. It probably, yeah, probably is. Um, yeah, that was wounding. I sort of feel like I need a drink, but it feels wrong to say based on the subject matter. I also. Someone can tell me in the comments whether like shows at Studio 54 normally do themed cocktails to the show or whether it's always themed to the radio. They've got a big disco ball as you go in right before that room that I showed you where the security was. Um, so like they do acknowledge the history of the space and that's cool. I just, I'm very curious if the reason they don't have specialty cocktails for this show is because, uh, you know what they should do? No, they should absolutely do specialty mocktails. They should do a whole list of like, Yeah, they should only do specialty mocktails. Um, not that there's an intermission for you to have learned what the show is about and be affected by it and then go and have a mocktail, but I just think that would be a good idea. That's, that's, that's how I would feel about it. Um, but yes, thoughts to come of in full review, but for now, we're going to go get some food, and then this evening we are off to where, Erin James? Out to dance down here at the Belasco. At the Belasco, yes, we're going to the Belasco Theatre to go and see how to dance in Ohio. So we saw Harmony the other day, which is sadly closing in early to mid-February, and so is how to dance in Ohio. Both sadly closing early, tricky times on Broadway and in the theatre industry worldwide, uh, but thankfully for us, we're going to catch both of those new musicals before they go. And we're seeing House Dance in Ohio this evening at the Blasco. But first, food. Now this is actually, I'm just stopping here to show you, my preferred view of Times Square. I think it looks nicer uh, from above looking downtown. I say looking downtown, you can't see downtown, but looking downwards that way. It's pretty from my eyes. I don't know if the camera's really capturing it. You can just about make out Ellen Stardust Diner and the Winter Garden Theatre where Back to the Future is. Now we've come over to uh, Rockefeller. We were just in the basement of the Rockefeller Center looking for free restrooms. Don't at me. Um, it was one hour 45 show. Um, but they have the ice skating rink back up. How cute is this? Aaron and I would consider this, but I have pre-existing roller skating injuries that indicate that would not be a good idea. And the last thing either of us needs is to fall and break something. We would have to use those little penguins. That would be us. But doesn't this look fun? And this is outside Rockefeller Plaza. Oh, this is Rockefeller Plaza, outside Rockefeller Center, between all these flags beneath this very tall building. This is not a hot take whatsoever, but Times Square is a lot. Just passed through. There's a lot going on. It's a busy place. We're hanging out by the specific Reese's entrance of the Hershey store. Killing time. Tonight's show is at 7.30, which should seem normal to us, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about a 7.30 in New York. It's weird. It's not for the really most, For the most part, their default is 8, and then some things are now doing 7s. Yeah. So 7.30 is just like unusual. It was just It's just gone 6.30, and I was like, oh, cool, half an hour to the show. And I was like, no, yeah. it is an hour. So they probably haven't opened the house yet. Hence us standing on the side of the road by the and, Hershey and, store. And looking at the Palace Theatre. And looking at the Palace Theatre. Let me show you the Palace Theatre. It's subtle. You might not notice it. So for scale, this is a car, and this, this is the Palace Theatre, if you, if you could, if you could tell. That's absolutely massive. I don't even know if you're getting a sense of the scale of just how enormous this is, but it is absolutely huge. I mean, that building to the left 
it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten floors up is the top of that there. And I'm guessing all of this is going to be the space for the poster for the artwork for whatever show eventually reopens the Palace Theatre. If you didn't know, this has been under construction because they have been raising it up, just like in the end of Kinky Boots. They said to the Palace Theatre, let us raise you up uh, so that they can put commercial space and stores down below. That's capitalism for you, and the Palace Theatre is now still there, only slightly higher. Um, Rumoured to be reopening with Tammy Faye, the musical from London, possibly later this year, but it's certainly got a compelling marquee space. My goodness. Also not the most, like, party or extensive dinner, but we just ate at the Melt Shop, which was a discovery on our first trip, and we've now been back multiple times. Not that anything is very far away, but it is east of Broadway and 7th Avenue, as is the Belasco Theatre where House Dance in Ohio is, as is uh, the James L. Jones where Gutenberg is, and the Hudson where Merrily is, and the Sondheim where Anne Juliet is. Um, so I was just thinking our brains, we were like, that's a good, slightly nearby eating location. And I had a lovely grilled cheese with some uh, crispy chicken. What did you have, Aaron James? He's still looking at the palace. <laughs> I had like a cheeseburger, a double cheeseburger melt. As a grilled cheese with gluten free yeah. bread. And really we had good. tater tots. Yeah. I love good. tater tots. So we thought the Velasco was one street down from the Hershey store. Like three streets later, we are, I feel like I could have walked to Ohio in the time oh, it's going to take me to get to How to Dance. Oh, yeah, we found the queue. We found the queue. Oh, we found Kate, by the way. Hey. Kate found us staring at the Palace Theatre in theatrical contemplation. So beautiful. We're going to go see How to Dance in Ohio now, in New York. And I'm going to take you with me. Why is this blurry? There we go. There we go. I'm going to take you with me. Yay. There is the marquee. I'm already walking under it. It says How to Dance in Ohio. It's very yellow. It's got light bulbs and it's gone. That was the end, everybody. <laughs> We all brought our How to Dance Now Hire, that's a great job Kate, <laughs> How to Dance Now Hire fidget spinners that we got given. I'm just looking. Aren't they fun? They also sell them here at the merch, which I'll show you now. So let me show you some of these merch items. We have magnets, we have the aforementioned fidget spinner. We have a t-shirt there for 35, we have a bucket hat. I've just noticed that all of the prices are on an Ohio shaped little thing. That's very cute. Uh, and it's a cute uh, merch booth. There is a bucket hat that's yellow for 25. Um, there is a tote bag there that says Building Momentum, song from the show. We have a Chili's water bottle. We've got uh, pins, we've got ornaments. We've got um, are those stickers. Yeah, we have stickers. Oh, no, the calm strips. That's cute. Post there. There's another t-shirt design with the names of the characters from the show. There is a very cute sweatshirt here in yellow that I'm tempted by. And you can also get sensory bags available here as well. If you weren't expecting this to happen. Sorry. <laughs> Where are you from? You don't know me well enough. Worth pointing out that down here by the restrooms and by the downstairs bar, there's also this cool down space, which is a lovely and thoughtful addition to the Belasco Theatre for this show. So welcome to the auditorium of the Belasco Theatre. I am in L105. Always forgetting. <laughs> Had to look at the seat next to me. And this is the stage of How to Dance in Ohio. So you can see it there. This is my playbill. As a reminder, they give you playbills for free when they show you how to get to your seat. And this is um, the Belasco Auditorium that we've heard so much about. Everyone's been telling us how beautiful this is. And they are not wrong. It looks not unlike a country club, but with boxes that Aaron says reminds him of the West End, which I do agree with. This theatre also has three levels. Many of Broadway's theatres only have two, an orchestra and a mezzanine. This has a balcony above a mezzanine, and I will show you perhaps during the intermission when I'm standing up and I can show you, because currently it's, it's above me. <laughs> 
Now they don't have specialty cocktails for this show either, um, but they do have cups. So we're just enjoying a, a double gin and lemonade. Yeah. I haven't tried it yet. You thought it was really good. Drink review. That is lovely. That is very nice. There you go. Ooh. And lovely cup souvenir. But if you just want the cups, uh, you can just get larger, cheaper drinks. Just like, like a soft drink. Yeah, you can get a soft drink. That's the cheapest way to get one of the cups. You don't have to get the specialty cocktails, which I think is something we thought mistakenly on our first trip. Post show, here is the full view of the Belasco looking stunning. My goodness, this is a gorgeous theatre. I understand what everyone has been saying. She's beautiful. And also, first ghost light we've seen on our trip because we've been um, not sticking around for long enough, I guess. But that is the ghost light that gets put on Broadway stages at the end of the show. There you go. And that is Kate. <laughs> <laughs> also on my way out gonna show you the cast board before I go because this company is all fantastic and very talented there you go remember the names oh my gosh I don't know if you can see that I've been crying I have cried at how to dance in Ohio listen I'm a former educator I was a teacher and so those bits at the end with like the parents being proud and the doctor like celebrating them for their achievement. I'm gonna cry again talking about it. And then also uh, saw Kelly Caloran Ben Simone from The Real Housewives of New York, who was also sat in the orchestra seeing How to Dance in Ohio. What? Um, unexpected Real Housewife sighting, which I appreciate this means nothing to many of you, but for those of you that it does, isn't that weird? Go to sleep, go to sleep, you're crazy. Um, yeah, now walking to the Hershey store to go get Aaron a replacement giant Reese's peanut butter cup because we did get one the other day and then Ashley's dog Ogie ate most of it. <laughs> we had to, we had to um, inject peroxide into his back. It was very traumatizing, but he's fine. He's fine. Aaron's gonna get a replacement peanut butter cup. I'm gonna keep crying and put on my How to Dance in Ohio bucket hat and be very sad that it's closing because I just had a wonderful time. Oh my gosh. New York, never change. Love ya. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theater. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe!